друзья, всем приятного дня, это Артем Спанганов. О, видишь, кто-то... Привет, я тебе... Да, и тебе привет. Я продолжаю свое путешествие по... Ну что ты лаешь? Что ты, что ты лаешь? Сегодня я продолжаю свое интервью и приехал в гости к Сазу, вот она меня уже ждет, встречает. Сегодня будем с ней знакомиться, узнавать, что она, кто она и вообще, чем она здесь занимается, как она живет, почему она про себя чуть-чуть расскажет. First, first, thanks for your time. Thank you that you let me come and make this interview with you. I would like to introduce yourself and tell some words about you, what, is, what you want to say. Sure, I'm Sasu. Um, and I mm -hmm. grew up, I mean, I was born in Cuba, and I left Cuba when I was 12, and I moved to the United States, and I lived in New Jersey for the next 20 plus years of my life, and two years ago <laughs> is when I came to Thailand. Uh, tell me, please, uh, how did you move to the United States? What did you do to move there? So, that was... Um, That was around 95, 1995, and a lot of people were leaving around that time. I mean, they're always leaving, but that was like a big movement. There were a lot of people that were leaving in boats and rafts and things like this to the United States, but we just left through the normal means, which means uh, my grandfather filed an application for my family and my mom to join him in the United States. It was approved. We got on a plane and we left. <laughs> Simple like this? Or really it was only to f fill in the application, nothing, nothing more? No, the application is like, yeah, sure, the application is not super complicated. Sure, yeah. Because I worked in immigration many years later, mm -hmm. so the application is fine, but the process of it takes a while because they do background checks on you, You have to do mm. medical checks. There's like a bunch of things that you need to do. How long did it last from the day of first? From nine the, months. Nine months from day of application till the approval. Yeah. Nine months. Nine months until we left. Until you left. It was really fast at that time. There weren't that many people that were actually using the legal means of leaving. Mm -hmm. Right now, the process can take many years. So it's gone in and out. It depends on like how many people are applying from a certain country and things like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a little complicated. I see. Nice. And then you, your first stop, and your first stop was New Jersey. Yes. <laughs> and so you spent uh, how many years did you spend there? Twenty, I think twenty-two years. Twenty years you spent in New Jersey, and you became, and you became uh, an American, yeah. American, normal American girl. Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, from twelve, it was all my teenage years in the states. And uh, I went to college, I went to high school and college in the States. I had a couple of careers, of a, well, a few careers, mm -hmm. like of extensive periods of time in the States. So yeah, I would consider myself American as much as I am Cuban. Mm -hmm. um, I think at the core of me, I know that uh, a lot of perhaps my views and morals and values are more Cuban. Um, but I have a lot of American in me as well, just because of my education. Mm -hmm. And um, and then what? You live the normal life, yeah? It's pretty normal, I guess. Like it depends on what you would consider normal. You had a job, you had salary, you had a place to for stay. For a while, for, for a while. while. Oh. Um, in 2012, I was. I had a job from college, um, I had a career from mm -hmm. college until 2012, which I graduated college in 2006, mm -hmm. so until 2012 I had a career as an immigration paralegal, so I was working in an office, the salary, with a boss, like in corporate America. And in 2012, like I knew it was coming mm -hmm. because it was the same day that I was going for a training in Florida for 
um, colon hydrotherapy. What colon? Uh, colon hydro. Ah. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Yes, yeah. I will translate. Col <laughs> col it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Colon hydrotherapy. So, colonics, or that's what? short for colonics. You went to train. So you already started to. Why I, did you choose this? How did you go there? I had already started moving, like my mind out of corporate America. What um, happened? Why did you start to move out of corporate? I mean, America? I did it on purpose. Like I actually wanted to leave that field, that career, not that I didn't like it, I actually quite enjoyed the work itself, but I knew that it wasn't what my soul was really craving for, I didn't want to be stuck in an office for my whole life, you know. Um, in fact, one of the jobs that I was, <laughs> the middle job, I had three jobs in uh, immigration paralegal work, and the middle one was a really good job, in that the vacation was really good, the people were really amazing, I felt like the uh, values of the corporation were actually really good. They really took care of their employees and all of this, they just didn't pay as much. As just a moment, yeah. stop. We, st we stop in the place where you tell me about the, the, your career. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the normal job, you, may, you could you were doing the career. Yeah. But when I moved to my third job, so the middle job was really good um, in that they were really good with their employees and all of this, it just didn't pay as good. But when I moved to the third job, I already knew that I wanted to leave this field. Um, so I moved there because they were paying me $20,000 or more, more than this job. Ten thousand dollars more uh, year, yearly, yeah, per yearly, year, per yeah. year. Mm -hmm. plus a lot more possibility to do overtime and all of these things that like you really think about when you're working in an office. And but I I hate that company because I have worked for them before. <laughs> no, they suck. They suck. They're so, horrible but still, with employees. But still, you moved there. Yes, because I did of it on the purpose. Money. Yes, because I did it money. on purpose. Mm -hmm. The purpose was let's try to make as much money as possible. Mm -hmm. Let's see how long I can last here, you know, and yeah, that was pretty much the goal, like the, in the back of my mind, because I had wanted to go back to school, but that didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I started doing six months before they fired me at the end was that I had already started studying to be a health coach. Health coach. So I, ha I have a health coaching certificate. And the day that they fired me, I was leaving to Florida to do my colonic certification training. So it actually really did work out very synchronistically, like yes. beautifully. Like mm. when I look back and I'm just like, wow, the timing could not have been perfect, like more perfect if I had actually planned it, you know? Mm. So then I did that. I did health coaching and nutrition coaching and uh, lifestyle coaching and then business coaching. So you attended trainings, courses? Yes, so I did a lot of work, um, a lot of courses, uh, uh, some certifications, um, yeah, a lot of work on myself to be mm -hmm. able to do this and at the same time I was training to be a colon hydrotherapist, I started working with clients and I was doing this as a part-time job. And so I was doing colonics and coaching at the same time. Eventually I stopped doing colonics because it was too far away from my home. Mm -hmm. um, and I was making too much money in the coaching. How, how, where did the first customers come from? Um, there were people that I had met. People that were interested in like learning how to be healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and they just and they were open for yeah because be I had trained, yeah? yeah I had a and I already a lot of people knew because of the way that I looked and the lifestyle that I led the food that I ate how did they know did you make a YouTube channel or how did you how did I you did I did do that uh, did you do any marketing for yourself yeah for sure like I had to do all of these things you know mm -hmm. but a lot of it was more like a person to person person to person interaction yeah, yeah. like people that. I, 
I posted something on Facebook mm. or and then they reached out or people that knew me I, mm. I remember because there was this girl that I um, that was a client with me a few times and we did the like she had a training with me in New York and then she knew me and then I posted something on Facebook and then she reached out and she was one of my first clients you know mm -hmm. um, and then there were other people that knew me from other programs and they wanted to learn about how to be healthy and all of this and uh, what was what was uh, uh, what was the did you get the paid on the how, how, Per no, hour? no, 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 or no, how no. Is it? a package, like a package. I would have like a program that I would put them through, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then we would work within that, like they were, I started, the first package that I ever sold was a thousand two hundred dollars or something like this, two hundred dollars per package, mm -hmm. yeah, then I had a couple of packages that I did for like five thousand, US dollars. Then I went down a bit and I was doing per session or per a package of sessions which was a little bit different. But then after that I went back to charging like for a package. Mm -hmm. And then I started with 2500, then I did 5000, then 7500, then 10000, and the most that I ever did was 25000. For package. Dollars. Yeah. I see. Yeah, it was good. But before I left the States, like one of the things that I wanted to do is not work in coaching anymore. Uh, there was something that just wasn't really resonating with me. Um, the money's not everything, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Did you do coaching? F did you do coach? Did you start to do coaching for money or? No, 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 of course yeah? not. Of course not. not yeah? But. A lot of the people were like, well, you were really being successful. Why wouldn't you continue doing it? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because it's not just about the success. There's a lot of other things that you have to take into consideration when you're guiding people and supporting people. And I felt like there was something that wasn't really working with my energy and like where I was that's, at. That's important what yeah. you say now. So I was just like, yeah, but I don't care about the money, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> if the money is okay, it's mm -hmm. great even, but if I don't feel like 100% I can devote myself to this and mm -hmm. do it in the right way, then I don't want to do it, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I went, when, before I left for Thailand, I pretty much stopped doing coaching. That was, uh, I had a few clients the last year, so the first year that I was here, I still had like a few clients here and there, but I was fine letting all that go. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I still feel like sometimes I miss teaching, mm -hmm. because that's one of the things that I really love, but right now I am so focused on colonics and, and spreading the word of colonics like and the benefits of colonics in health and all of this that I don't feel like that re I don't really have a lot of space for coaching or anything like that and honestly I don't want to because I like really working with someone's body like I and yeah and, I see and uh, then you moved you just what, what what was what did what did bring you to Kopangan and what why did you move to Kopangan? Or was Kopangan your first place? With no, I went to Samui. First? So mm -hmm. the last three years that I was in the States, I well, the last two years that I was in the States, I came to Thailand mm -hmm. two years in a row to take a break from my relationship over there. Mm -hmm. And I went the first time to Chiang Mai and Samui, and the second time I just came to Samui. So. I loved Samui like enough that I said, well, if I'm going to go to Thailand to try and live there, then I'm going to go to Samui. But once I got to Samui and I decided I'm going to be here for a really long time, it, doesn't, it didn't really vibe with me. Mm -hmm. 
So I was going to go to Chiang Mai to try and see if I could live up there because I had some friends there. And I decided to hop on the islands to see um, to see them because I had only been to Samui over here. I hadn't been to Kupangana, I hadn't been to Hotel. So I said, okay, let's, let's island hop a little bit. And I came here for just one week. And when I came here, I was just like, this is it! This is the place that I've been wanting, like the whole time. I still went to Kotao, I still went to Chiang Mai for a couple of weeks, but then I came back and I haven't left. So i am been really happy here. And here, I just came here just for vacation for a week, really. And for a week? Yeah. And yeah, and I've been here ever since, you know? How, how long have you, how long have you? It's been two years. Two years you've yeah. been here. In May 18th, that you, was like a few days ago. Yes. Congratulations. And in, 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 the, in, the, in this time you didn't leave the island or did you go anywhere? I've gone, yeah, because you have to leave every three Please, months uh, yeah. for the visa runs. And I've also gone on vacation a couple times. So I went to, well, three times. I went to the States again. Mm -hmm. And I went to Cuba, mm -hmm. so that was like a whole trip to the States and Cuba. Then last summer I went to Barcelona, because my brother lives there. And then me and my brother and sister and their partners went to Japan in March before, I mean the end of February, before she oh. hit the roof. <laughs> she hit the roof, yeah. <laughs> That's when we went and it was amazing, because it wasn't really, there weren't that many people traveling, so. We still had, it was really nice. It was really good job. So, so I've gone out of here for like extended periods, mm -hmm. only three times. And then everything else has been like one day here, a couple of days yeah. there. Like mostly to Penang to do visa runs and things like this. Like not really anything extended. Uh, how do you spend your, what is your daily routine now? I mean, I have a lot of time, so I see clients, that's my focus and my schedule revolves around whether I have clients for colonics or not, mm -hmm. um, and I see clients usually in the mornings, because that's the best time to do colonics, and then I would have the rest of the day free, like I do still do some work online, right now I'm... Uh, working on a project to spread colonics throughout the world. Uh, tell me some words because people, not everyone knows what is colonics. Colonic uh, or gravity colonics because mm -hmm. there's different types of colonics. The people have been exposed more than anything to machine colonics which is where the water is uh, forced into the body and then pumped out of the body and uh, the, gra the colonics that I do is gravity and the water is going in and out simultaneously so you never really feel mm. full and you're never really experiencing force with the body it's very gentle and what it does is it brings water into the body to just gently stimulate with massage and pumping to allow the body to release the excess waste that we have inside that a lot of the times we can't. I mean, just to be a little bit more graphic, just think about the amount of food that you eat versus the amount of food that you poop, you know? A lot of the times people are not pooping as much as they're eating. And that stuff stays there. <laughs> and it stays there, and it stays there, and it's years and years and years, and it's still there. So um, the goal or the, the goal, the, the purpose of colonics is to actually help the body remove this excess waste so that then it can function better. And if the body doesn't have to expend its energy dealing with this waste, then it can use the energy to heal itself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to detox more, to do whatever else it needs to do for yeah, more optimal health. So that's the idea. Yes, I, I see. And okay, now it's uh, now I now everyone understands. Yeah, Und for sure. Understands it better. And uh, do you do it 
here at home? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a relatively simple system to set up if you know how to do it. So it's not simple if you don't know how to set it up because there's measurements for everything. Like the, the, where, the, uh, where the table for the bed needs to be, where the toilet needs to be, where the water tank needs to be, all of these things need to be very specific. But once you know how to do that, it's very easy to set it up and yes i've been able to set it up i have a i had a table constructed here mm -hmm. someone made it for me and i give sessions in my house it's very easy mm. and how do how do people find you how word of you? mouth mostly well, mm -hmm. yeah people have come for sessions mm -hmm. i at the very beginning i just mention it to some people mm -hmm in a few messenger groups mm -hmm. and from there they came they send more people they send more people they send more people and yes i do get some from people that are doing searches online or people that are asking in the conscious community group like mm -hmm. does anybody know where to do colonics everybody tags me so if people do a quick search on colonics on that group, they already see that I am the only person on the island that <laughs> can do colonics, you know, is certified, has mm -hmm. like all of these things, you know, um, years and years and years of experience as well, you know, mm -hmm. which comes for a lot. Um, so they, yeah, mostly, and then I post here and there sometimes, like if I ever feel like not enough people are coming, then I'll post something. But I'm not very consistent with that. Honestly, this last year, I didn't do that much marketing or anything. Mm. It just kind of flowed. Flowed, mm. Yeah, so this year I'm a little bit more focused because I want to, I, I do also some online work for um, my sister. Um, and now I'm having her uh, get help from someone else. So I will have more time and energy to focus on my own projects, and that's uh, more colonics uh, and spreading the word of colonics, getting toolkits for people to do this at home, hopefully mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how much how much does one uh, session cost? Uh, so generally three thousand. Three thousand baht. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if um, yeah. That's the, the price for the session. And it it already helps a lot. Yeah, I mean, like. What do is there's out of out of your own exp out of your exp your I mean, exp I did one this morning. I will tell you, <laughs> like, for myself, which mm -hmm. is not always the easiest thing to do, but I do them for myself all the time. Mm -hmm. I get them about once a week. Once a week. Mm -hmm. And. I have not found a single thing that helps more than colonics, in my opinion, when it comes to health. And it doesn't, it, even if you're raw cost, even if you're vegan, you should do well, colonics or all less in that case? No, more. Because here's... Raw vegans and... Yes. Uh, well, because this, well. is, this is why. The, more, the cleaner you eat, the more that you detox. The more that you detox, the more that you can retox, you can reabsorb the toxins into your body if they're not moved fast enough. So people that are, I don't recommend in any way that people jump into a raw vegan mm -hmm. lifestyle mm -hmm. really quickly because mm -hmm. that causes a lot of toxins to get dumped into the system and then it can be very damaging for people especially if they're not doing colonics. Even if they're doing colonics, it could be too much. So that's why it's good to go slowly into the lifestyle, slowly. I have been, I was really, really clean uh, like from eight years ago to like about five years ago. And then for about three years, I was really not doing the lifestyle as well. Mm -hmm. And then the last couple of years, I have slowly started again everything and I can tell you that it takes a really long time it takes a lot of dedication and work and to answer your question the cleaner that you are the more that you will need this 
a lot of the time. Obviously, someone that's my one of my mentors calls them a cesspool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> someone that's really dirty on the inside needs it a lot, but they can't go from zero to one hundred because that would be really shocking to the body and it would cause people mm -hmm. to get really sick. Right? So a lot of people that have done uh, extreme fasts or extreme diets, they get really sick and they're like, oh, this shit doesn't work. Mm -hmm. No, bitch! It's not about the shit doesn't work. It's that you're not doing it right, you know? Right, right, right. Well, yeah. yeah, you have to go very slowly with it. And colonics is a very awesome tool with this because it supports you so that you can actually continue to clean your body. And why do people need it, even if they're doing really clean, besides for the fact that they're detoxing a lot? Because you have to consider that they have spent many, many years before they started doing this that they were really dirty, quote mm -hmm. unquote. So that stuff is there, it's accumulated. Like, it takes many, it took many years for it to be accumulated. It takes many years for it to be cleaned. And consider the additional exposure that you're getting on all the time in water, chemicals, Everywhere. air, mm -hmm. pollution, and, and uh, radiation. Mm -hmm. And the things that the body can't really uh, get rid of on its own because it doesn't know how to process it. So that's all of these things, the chemicals, the plastics, the pollution, the radiation. The body doesn't know how to uh, get rid of it. It doesn't mm -hmm. know because it's not a natural thing, so it doesn't know how to get rid of it. So this is why we help the body to get rid of it as much as we can. I see. And colonics are really excellent for that. For nice. me, nothing works for uh, how, how, how often should a normal person do such kind of uh, detox, such kind of treatment? It depends on whether they're releasing or not. So if someone is releasing, mm -hmm. so long as they're releasing, you can kind of time it based on how much they're releasing. So if someone came today and they had a crazy session, they were releasing, releasing, wow, amazing. Okay, they come next week, they still have like a crazy session. Once a week is good, mm -hmm. right? If someone comes and next week they're not releasing that much, then it's too soon. Then they should be coming maybe once a month for now and see how it works, mm. once every three weeks or something like this. So long as they're releasing a lot, that's kind of like the... It's kind of a sign that it's... I mean, everything. it's working. It's so, working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you want that stuff to be out. Like if it's... I mean, just think about it. Mm -hmm. If it's a lot of shit coming out mm -hmm. of you, mm -hmm. right? That wasn't gonna come out of you normally. Like, it would take like very long and there's a lot. And then the next session, there is still a lot. And then the next session, there is still a lot. Can you imagine what it's like when you're not getting rid of this stuff? You know what I mean? And we're living with this inside of us. We're living with it. We're going about our lives with all of this shit inside of us. <laughs> uh, what, about, what about keeping, uh, how do you call it, uh, starving? Keeping, uh, keeping, don't eat, not eat, not drink. How do you call it? Uh, fasting? Fasting, yeah. What about fasting and... Co that, can, can you combine fasting and colonics? Most people do. Yeah. So they come to me when they're doing fasts in whatever capacity. Usually not dry fasts, but mm -hmm. they'll do like uh, water, water or fast. coconut or mm -hmm. juice mm -hmm. or smoothies or whatever. And uh, it helps a lot. It does help a lot because when you're stomach doesn't have to deal with digestion, then more toxins get dumped into the colon to be eliminated out of the body and then the colonic comes in and cleans everything out. So it's very good to do a deeper cleanse. Is it necessary? No, that's not how I do my colonics. Like I usually just drink green juice for a couple of days before. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll do my colonic on the third day in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did today. The last couple of days I had my green
green juices. But did you drink during, or did you eat during the day? You Today? No, during this. Yes, I you did. did. You did yesterday and you, you, the day before. You could eat, yeah. You, you yeah, can yeah, eat. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's how I do it, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. because I already know my body is very easy with this. Like I've been doing this for a really long time. Green juices for me are a must when it comes to colonics. I don't like doing colonics without green juices. I kind of feel like I don't get as deep mm -hmm. into the tissues, mm -hmm. like to really get rid of the stuff that's stuck in there. It doesn't work as well. Um, and that I think is most people, but most people here, they just fast on whatever and come to me. And usually, honestly, the colonics here are so much better than in New York like so much better i don't know i, I kind of think that it has to do partly with my system mm -hmm. that i feel is really much better than the one that i was using in new york and also the fact that people here are a little bit more they're less stressed and less more sun burden mm, yeah, yeah by nature toxins mm. toxins yeah. like Stress. crazy energy in the city yeah so yeah, yeah it's uh it works well how much is, does does a colonic session cost in New York? In New York, it's one hundred and fifty dollars. One hundred and fifty dollars, correct. Okay. And uh, what? How do you eat now? How do you eat? What do you eat? What is your nutrition? So usually I have juice in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, on a perfect day, I will mm -hmm. have a shake sometime in the afternoon, mm -hmm. like early morning, like later morning. So I have juice then shake, mm -hmm. then I'd have my meal for the day. And then I'll have more juice later on in the day. Uh, that's usually my diet, mostly every day anyways, but sometimes because of timing, I can't really fit in a uh, shake. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I won't have the fruit, mm -hmm. I'll have the juice, I'll have my meal, maybe I'll have a snack of something and then I'll have more juice in the later in the day. But I really love being able to have my first food of the day to be fruit. Mm -hmm. um, some days it happens, some days it doesn't. It depends on where I'm at. Uh, well, are you vegetarian, vegan, or how you... How you now vegan. No, you're mostly so vegan. Mm -hmm. I prefer not to, but my hormones get really messed up whenever I have eggs or fish, mm -hmm. which is all that I've had in the last 12 years. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been off of meat for 12 years. I had an experiment in there where I had some meat for like a few months mm -hmm. and it did not go well for me. Mm -hmm. So I've, I have been on and off of eggs and fish. Mm -hmm. I do better with fish than I do with eggs, but now neither work for me. Um, for me. I had some in Japan when I was there in February and I'm still cleaning that out. Uh, well, yeah, I have a. So um, you, how do you feel it? That you, how do breast you? Breast pain usually. Breast pain. Yeah, breast pain. Ah, breast pain. Ah. Yes, <laughs> and. Uh, and oh. it's a sign. Of yeah, immediately I, I wow. feel it. Yeah, so breast pain and my periods have been more painful. Ah. So okay. more, more period pains, more and discomfort. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, and this happened every time, like these days you know when I had me like many years ago probably like 10 years mm -hmm. ago or eight years ago mm -hmm. then I did my little experiment immediately my breath started hurting and I was just like okay this is crazy just... and then the eggs and the fish weren't affecting me the same way but now they are now I can't even have the fish the fish was the thing that I could always go back to and be fine mm -hmm. and now I can't even have it so I mean I do have like um, moral reasons for not having these things anymore sure. either mm -hmm. um, so I'm okay without it for now I see thank you sure um, <laughs> I if you want uh, if you want to say something else something important something for the to uh, to finalize our interview sure. um, it will be nice yeah. <laughs> I will be grateful so when you asked me to do the interview, I really felt like I wanted to share that um, a lot of people in 
the States and other people that I know throughout the world, they find that I'm very brave because I just decided to pack up and leave and move yes. to nice. move to Asia, you yes. know? And I find this very interesting to me because I find that it was the easiest thing that I've ever done. Like it was the easiest thing that you ever done. Easy. It was very easy for me to just leave. Um, it was, I think the decision took a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. The actual doing did not take that much. I think that the, I think that the idea that people have of like the attachments that they have in their life that yeah. are really grabbing them and holding them onto a life that they don't really want to have is very sad. I feel in a lot of ways. Personally, I let go of a lot of these things in a, I knew for like ha, for like a year before I moved to Thailand that I was going to move here. So And you get prepared. You start I did, to, to I you, start, you start to to get prepared yeah, for yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. It was a slow process, mm -hmm. but I already knew what I needed to do. It was mm -hmm. six months of me moving out of New Jersey and out of my life with my ex-partner. Um, and I had a lot of things and a lot of responsibilities and all these things, and I slowly let all of them go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, when I moved out of New Jersey, I just had a car, like a very small car, that wasn't even full with all of my stuff. It was just a small car, Real cool. right? Cool. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm minimalist anyway, so mm -hmm. and back then I still had way more than I have right now. I don't. I own like 23 pieces of clothing. This is all I own right now. You know, I'm always wearing the same stuff. Like I don't care. 23 pieces of clothes. And that's with coats. This with coats. With coats, with winter coats. With so winter. <laughs> I don't have that much that I wear. I wear almost nothing. Um, and slowly when I moved to Florida then I was in Florida for six months with my family because I knew that I wanted to spend some time with them before coming here mm -hmm. and that was also very easy and then when I moved when I finally came here there was so much freedom in the choice of actually not feeling like you're stuck there's always there's always one path that I feel gives you a little bit more of a breath, of a deep breath. I don't know, that's what it feels like to me. Like, I'm like, I am supposed to be going in this direction. Whatever's holding me back, I am supposed to be going in this direction. And a lot of people, they look at this direction rather than this direction, right? Um, for me, it was easy because I trust myself like I trust that I am where I'm supposed to be all the time um, even when this whole pandemic thing was happening at the beginning and people were like oh my god should I go back home and all of this that didn't even ever enter my mind I'm like I am home what the hell am I gonna do in the States you know and the most surprising thing is when people from the States from my past lives as an immigration paralegal or like a Colin hydrotherapist in New York or like a coach and all of this, they're like looking at me and they're like, wow, you're so brave, you know? And to me, it's just like, there's nothing brave about it. Like it's you actually being able to really listen to yourself and be honest with yourself about what is important and what you need to be doing right now. Um, I always find that so amusing, um, but I think I think the first few times that you actually listen to yourself are the times that are the hardest, because you're like, what if it doesn't work out, you know? For me, I didn't even consider that either. I didn't consider, like, what if it's not going to work out? No, I'm going to make it work out. I don't know how I'm going to make it work out, but I'm going to make it work out, you know? So there's these little things in you, like in your, the way of your thinking, that can change. Like it can feel a little bit harder at first before you have the practice. But 
over time, if you continue to listen to yourself, if you continue to really honor your path and really follow it, it gets a lot easier. So it's not about bravery, uh, really. I feel like more than anything, it's about honesty, like being honest with yourself about what you really need to be doing right now. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cap as we always ah. say. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, I appreciate it yeah, that you sure. shared all this, all yeah. your experience with me and with some people who will watch this video. And uh, we hope, we hope that more honest people will come yes. come out out of it yes. we'll, we'll, we'll try to find their path and uh, thanks once again <laughs> okay nice